my name is Rob and this is Karen um, and currently we're in a band called Babel uh, which has been together I think now for a couple of years but it's kind of mutated quite a lot over that time as, and we've mutated as well as you can see uh, and our current project is the Bren Circuses project which we can talk about later obviously but uh, that's me over to you Karen just to introduce yourself. Well, I'm Karen. I'm the other half of this project. Uh, Rob and I have worked together for quite a good many years. Um, and this came about really in the last 18 months when uh, we decided that we, we do a project called Bread and Circuses because we felt we had something to say about really how we feel that things are going. And I, I just think musically, I always strive to try and say something via the music. So that's really where this project's come from. Uh, but. Yeah, there's, there's lots of background, so I'm going to let you right. ask me questions. Well, I'm going to actually take a theme from uh, your Bread and Circuses album, Psychiatry. I okay. want you to tell me about your childhood and uh, the sort of <laughs> music me. that first really grabbed That's you, that you really remembered. Yeah. Buddy Holly, not fade away the... the um, the tremolo stroke reverb guitar on there, I thought, whoa, that's amazing. And that was before I even started to play guitar. I started playing when I was about uh, 10. Um, so yeah, not fade away, um, Hound Dog, and uh, those are the ones that really stick in my head. Certainly not 76 trombones. Right. <laughs> that's, that's gone. Okay. What about you, Karen? Well, similarly, I had loads of 78s. In fact, I've still got a bunch of them out in the other room. Um, and as a child, we were given loads of them, and we used to play frisbee with them and chuck them around, which I look back on now with a great tragedy, really. <laughs> like, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, but I was brought up listening to Frank Sinatra, uh, jazz, blues, I used to listen to Alexis Corner's show years ago and I really always liked the blues, always liked the blues and really got into the jazz and blues singers but really very eclectic tastes and I've always liked all music, anything that moves me I also used to listen to classical music as well um, and I come from a very working class background and family so music was what you heard on the radio or the telly uh, we did get a, 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 an old fashioned, you know, the old phonogram and, and everything. So I read loads of records. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so and my dad was was a really good singer as well. I used to sing. So I basically just whatever was there I listened to. But I was knew what I didn't like. I liked the more uh, soulful, moody Frank Sinatra. Um, uh, I can't remember the album now. The one where he's got the face of a clown on the front. All the stuff that the very late night, the boozy sitting in the bar at 3am songs, all those tracks, the really, really uh, sad ones. And, and also the one, of course, which um, always sticks with me is when I was 21, it was a very good year, which I think has got the most amazing uh, musical arrangement, Nelson Riddle. Um, so I was listening to all of the whole, the whole of the music, if you like. Um, blues people, I liked any old blues man that, that sounded authentic on a piano or guitar. So. There's loads, isn't there? I mean, you could, there's just quite a few. Um, who did I listen to? I'm wondering about female singers or, or artists. Well, yeah, yes, I, I didn't. I listened to loads of men, and I've got quite a deep voice anyway, and, and I tend to sort of go towards a soulful voice, so it tends to be the stuff I listened to were, were mainly men. I mean, over the years, I've listened to loads of female singers, and there are absolutely loads out there that I love, but when I was younger, it was mainly uh, male voices that I went for. The only one I really liked was Ella Fitzgerald because she's such a fantastic singer and can and can do anything. So that was the only one I sort of really got in. What followed Buddy Holly, Elvis Presley, yeah. what followed Frank Sinatra and yeah. Ella Fitzgerald? For me I think it was uh, things like, I never really liked the Beatles very much uh, until uh, Sgt Pepper and Revolver I think, but the early stuff I didn't like, I always preferred the Stones. What was it that you didn't like about the Beatles? I thought they were the too Beatles. commercial uh, and I preferred the R&B sounds of the Stones after listening I think to the early rock and roll, made more of a connection with that and early Kinks I really liked. And then from then it went into the British blues boom which I think then took me into blues music big time like John Mayall's Blues Breakers, John Mayall, yeah. Ainsley Dunbar. I mean, John Mayall was the was the mover, really. Yeah, and, and about twenty five of Pine Yeah, album. you know, and I like a hard road with you know with Peter Green um, yeah. uh, and the Beano the album, Supernatural, Supernatural, yeah. the Beano album, Eric Clapton, all that stuff. Uh, early Yardbirds with Jimmy Page, amazing, amazing stuff. I remember listening to you know um, stuff on John Peel where they were doing live live mm. broadcasts, incredible stuff. Mm. And then early Led Zeppelin. 
and then Led Zeppelin anyway. And then, of course, then that took me looking to uh, some of the, the blues masters, you know, Buddy Waters, Muddy Waters, Buddy Waters, <laughs> Buddy Guy, um, John Lee Hooker, Sunhouse, you know, all that kind of stuff I really got into as well. But it was more the electric blues I think I really, really liked. And obviously the guitarist, then suddenly Jimi Hendrix suddenly appeared. And has always been my hero, my god. Yeah. Someone like Jimi Hendrix was just like amazing when he came on the scene with Hey Joe. They used to have all those singles on the Red Polydor label single of Hey Joe, with Stone Free on the yeah. back. Yeah. Um, and then Purple Haze, Wind Cries Mary, um, The Burning of the Midnight Lamp. Yeah, that's right. Electric or, Lady Lamp. Yeah, and then Electric Lady Lamp. I mean, although I experienced was just awesome. Mm. Absolutely awesome. I experienced the track itself. Wow. Blew me. Oh, it's and just like does. six were nine as well. That's six were nine on Axis Boulder's Laugh, yeah. Uh, and then Electric Later, just sublime. You know, I was just thinking, I was going, my head was going off into thinking of Grace Slick and Jefferson yeah. Airplane, yeah. Jefferson Starship. I can see the Grace yeah. Slick thing. Yeah, yeah, always loved her. And yeah. I was also thinking when I was a child, being on the train going to Weymouth and having a portable radio. Me and my sister had a radio and hearing see Emily play for the first time and being totally blown yeah. away and then buying it when we got to Weymouth and then just playing it and playing it over and over again. Um, and, and I really like the psychedelic. I mean I'm a hippie. I'll yeah. always be a hippie. There's no sort of like two ways. I'm not going to be anything else really. But the music is, it, it transcends an era to me. It just keeps going along. Um, because it's the feeling behind it and those psychedelic bands and that feeling and Hendrix and that mm. that still pervades my my interest and my um, exploration of music now because it's not one particular thing no. it's like coming from a place a heart and a soul that is totally beyond the genres and that's why I like that sort of music I don't try and put it into one particular that was the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, because I, I went through like, I loved glam rock, I saw Roxy, you know, with Eno of course, yeah, you're of talking course. the real Roxy yeah. music, um, and, and stuff like that, which was really groundbreaking, and, and, as a, and, and also seeing David Bowie for the very first time on Top of the Pops, I, I've heard loads of people, in fact Susie Sue said this, uh, she saw David Bowie on, on TV on Top of the Pops, singing, you know, Starman, and it was like an alien had landed, and I remember feeling exactly the same. I was in a Scottish hotel full of old people, I remember. And I was the only person in the TV lounge, and so I was able to put this TV on. And I just sat there, and, and it changed my whole world, really. Yeah. And I followed, I followed him for years, and I, I just so have so much respect for Bowie yeah. in all his different incarnations. So and he's been, we were, been a big influence yeah, on me. If we're in the future, even his later albums have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah some, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Always worth a look, because he's very innovative. Yeah, yeah. And he's always doing something unusual and lyrically that's where for me hearing somebody put together uh, not just a song but some amazing lyrics not always that made sense so would give us an example of a uh, and I'm asking you for tracks again, because I always think of the Beauty Brothers. I, I was just going to say, yeah, the yeah, Beauty yeah, Brothers, yeah. Uh, which is one that always yeah. strikes me, and uh, Man Who Sold The World, I mean any of that early stuff, where you've got very poetic, uh, very lyrical um, um, language, and for me I was always into the words as well as the music, they have to be good. I remember seeing, uh, when I was very young, uh, a package tour, which had uh, Jimi Hendrix Experience, Engelbert Humperdinck, <laughs> <Yay. laughs> Sublime to the ridiculous. Um, I don't know, someone like Eamon Corner, uh, I, I can't remember. Uh, and saw a similar package with Rolling Stones and Tina Turner, that was more of a thing. I think that's my first things. And then getting into things like Genesis, early yeah, Genesis, Peter Gabriel, from Peter Gabriel that's, that's, yeah. and always, fabulous. again, you know, right up there in the heavens as far as I'm concerned, Peter Gabriel, Absolutely. always. Fantastic. Fantastic. Sort of really. Really. my favourite track of all time. Which yeah. one? Sort of is ready. Oh yeah, yeah. what a fantastic. But bizarrely, it's the second album. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just <laughs> tremendous. And again, I think, big influence on the way he appeared. And the rest of the band were kind of, mm, what's he doing now? What's he looking like a sunflower? But, you know, it didn't, it, it was just, it, it was just something different and it took people. Well again, took lyric, lyrics and as well, lyrics, with yeah. Peter Gabriel, yeah. and, you know, amazing arrangements of vocals yeah. um, and Kate Bush of Kate course Bush. at the same time who I really, really, mm. really got into. And mm. also, go on. Punk explosion. Well I was thinking of funk before punk, oh, funk. I, was, I, I was into funk, funk. Yeah. I was yeah. well into funk and yeah. I was a disco, disco diva. 
to a certain degree. Uh, but I I loved the funk. I love the I love the bass. I love uh, mm. Bootsy Collins. So it's from um, Italian Parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah all that yeah. stuff. Uh, but just that whole feeling and the, the grooves mm -hmm. and being able to dance because I love dancing and I love moving because I think the, the voice and, and the, the movement are two things, they come together so everything that was moving that time it, it really it, it got me, it really made me feel like I could express that when I was dancing. Right. So you weren't so, anti-disco or anything like that? Not at disco all. Sucks or anything like no, that? No, 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 not at all. No, And I think it's coming back anyway. I think there's a huge revival of really good mm. crossover funk Music. I mean, I got heavily into, I suppose, jazz funk, jazz rock. Right. I was a bit dismissive of the disco stuff. Uh, that's because I think it's probably then I was kind of progressing musically myself. So I was very much into like um, uh, Weather Report, John oh, yeah, McLaughlin, yeah, Ma Maravishnu yeah. Orchestra, the uh, stuff Jeff Beck used to do when he went into his sort of funk yeah. jazz rock phase. Camel Caravan? Not so no, much. Bit, interesting. Yeah, not a bit too. Um, I don't know what it was. A bit too proggy, a bit too English. Although I love prog, it, there are certain bands I can't quite get there. I, it, maybe it was just a bit too. I don't know what would be, would be the word. Twee? Mm, uh, twee, or maybe it's a bit uh, too elegant. Right. You know. I love Cameron and Cameron, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it just didn't. It just didn't hit me in the right place. I didn't get into punk at all. Right. I was living um, a life where I was working in London. I really, I went to see loads of bands when I was up there. I went to see Elvis Costello. I saw all the, the jam, everything. But I was actually, at the time, quite frightened of the Sex Pistols. Now, this is really strange because mm. I've always been quite rebellious. But for some reason, it just didn't gel with me. I liked more. I liked the jam. I liked the clash. I loved the clash. But for some reason, I, I couldn't go there. Now, interestingly enough, I've probably become more radical as I've got older, and I now I really like John Lennon much more than I ever yeah, did. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think that he's got a lot to say, but at the time I didn't. I but I was into the, a lot of different yeah. music that was coming out. I'd like you like to go more into that the Sex Pistols thing. What was it that scared you there? I think I, I was think surrounded... Really well, it was the Thatcher era, and I was surrounded by a lot of people in work, and I was quite quite young, and they were all trying to tell me that it was bad and bad for the establishment, and it was really upsetting everybody. and. And I suppose when you're younger, you tend to think that people older than you do know what they're talking about. Well, you know that's a crock of shit, isn't it, when you get older? But at the time, you think that's that's it. And I, I suppose I was a bit scared. And I've, I've got, as I've got older, I've got, doesn't say much more radical, which is the opposite of what most people do. They start off very radical and become more and more conservative. Well, it's been quite the different one. I was a very repressed young person, and I've slowly got more and more weird. It was a real statement against what was happening in the nation at the time and then I started to realise just actually even though it sounded quite simplistic there were some bands that were actually doing some really really good mm. things within that genre mm. and of course that from that came the new wave of mm -hmm. you know a new wave yes, of it. Yeah. so you've got bands like Talking Heads well, you know yeah. which is one of my old time greats as well David Ben brilliant and suddenly I could see that there was something in there so I had a bit of a sea change during that period and I think my current at first of all I thought punk what the hell is this crap and then I saw, and then I got into the energy of it, um, and then using my, using my guitar skills. Then I mean, I played in a bag, number of bands, then sort of new wave, new wave, new wave, um, and then power pop bands. Very very fast, but very incredibly intricate chordings and pickings. And even though you might think, oh, it's just a you know a little two minute pop song, a lot would be put into that material. So it's surprising. So yeah, initially a bit of a, you know, and I certainly had a total change of, of, of um, character of how I looked. <laughs> the hair went, right. you know, um, became very short, uh, dressed, dressed in, in what was happening, and really and then got into it. Like? So uh, I, like oh, I had uh, drain pipe dra jeans, uh, red brothel creepers. You can see it on YouTube, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, no, yeah, you can, yeah, with, you the, can fans, with the fans, yeah. yeah. I used to wear... A, uh, like drain pipe, uh, green, poison green velvet trousers, with this red shirt with big black polka dots on it, and some uh, red brothel creepers. They were kind of things I was wearing, and a and a jacket I got from the states, which was like a 1950s lounge jacket, and it was shot silk, red, dark red shot silk with black and a black, um, you know, silk collar, uh, which was all kind of tatty, and I had it covered in badges and all that kind of stuff. So you know, really going to it. <laughs>